Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. This is going to be a little bit of a different setup than how I normally do my deep dives and how I normally do Monday Mystery. Normally, I would come to you guys with a full full research, a storyboard, everything. But I wanted I wanted to run this in a little bit more of a conversation, even though you guys aren't here to have the conversation with me. But I cannot wait to see... Um, your reaction to this in the comment section below. I literally just became aware of this yesterday. I am pre-recording this video. So yesterday was Halloween. The irony is not lost on me that that's when I became aware of this little um, situation, this global situation, possibly glo global situation, but more or less a situation for us in Canada and America. And I am shooketh. I don't know how I went this many years living at the foot of Appalachia and not knowing about this. Obviously, I know a lot about Bigfoot sightings in Appalachia. I know a lot about cryptoid creatures like the Dogman. I have covered the werewolf of Georgia which I will place down in the description box. Below. I have also covered the lost prophecy of the blue people with my friend Angie. I will put this uh, in the description box below as well, because of course, if you guys remember the blue people, they're in Appalachia too. Now they were up in like Kentucky, Virginia area. And we're going to be focused more with this story closer to me, which is part of Appalachia that runs the border of ten Tennessee and North Carolina. Now, with that being said, this phenomenon, if you can call it that, there are sightings and stories of this all over the North American continent. So it's not just my area of the world. Anywhere where you're living in uh, crazy um, conditions like Appalachia, you're probably going to have stories of this phenomenon. What am I talking about? I'm talking about feral people. Now, I'm going to make this very clear. Feral people are not, they are not people who have decided to live off the grid. Feral people, from my, from from the from what I've seen in one day in 24 hours of being like, what the fuck is this? There are two groups of feral people. We're only going to focus on the main group. One group of feral people is people who go and hide out in Appalachia or the Rocky Mountains or whatever, wherever, because they they're wanted for like murder, like the Unibomber or something, and they become a little bit feral just for being in such harsh environments without civilization being a around them. And perhaps they've run into Appalachia, run into the mountains to hide without preparation. So like people who just go off the grid, like people who want to go off the grid, they've prepared for it. And these people who choose to live off the grid and the people who run into Appalachia to hide have something in common that feral people don't have, the main group of feral people don't have with these people. The people who choose to live off the grid and the people who run into Appalachia to hide and become feral, they, both those groups, come from civilization. Now, I know that this might, you know, we're in the, the age of everybody getting offended and if you get offended easily, you probably shouldn't be on my channel anyway because it's fucking ridiculous. You know, you lived in, you live in a privileged society if you got to argue with everyone. I know that that saying civilization can cause a debate in the comment sections. I'm not here. The, the point of this story is not to have a debate on what a civilization actually is. So lack of a better word between something that's feral 
and something that's civilized. We're going to use our life, you watching me right now. We come from civilization. And we're going to use that word for sake of, of no other word to use to compare and contrast against who we are as human beings and who the feral people are as human beings. Okay? Because I really want to drive this home. That this is fucking crazy. And I, I mean... We know that there are cases where children have been found in the wild who got lost to become kind of feral. We know about this. I'm not talking about that. Though That's what I thought was the only type of feral human that existed before I ran across this information. I thought the only type of feral or wild human that existed was the people or the kids that got found after a few years. No, I'm talking about a clan of people living in fucking Appalachia who have never been in a town or a city before. Okay, so again, let's go back to this. People who try to live off grid or go to live off grid or those who run into the, the forest to hide, Again, they, their, their foundation, where they come from, is civilization. They come from an environment where we speak a common language, where we read and rewrite, where they know what a town is, they know what a house is, they know what a store is, they know what a stoplight is, they know what a car is. The feral people I'm referring to, the ones that are the problems are not, well, may they're, the, they're a little bit of a problem for us, and we're going to get into why that is. Don't have never lived in civilization. Ever. Ever. I'm like shaking talking about this because it's just so, it's so creepy. It's so creepy. So I often believe on this channel, I think I've said this, that as I do my, my deep dive and my research, I'm kind of guided to certain topics. And yesterday, being Halloween, um, I was just researching something, another story I'm working on. It was another story I'm working on and I stumbled upon this and I was so terrified and, but so intrigued at the same time. And this also terrified me too, because I'm up and up in the mountains. Like Atlanta's right on the edge of Appalachia. Like, like, so we can drive two hours North and we're like, in the middle of, of the, the woods. And we, we do that a lot. We go up there. We go hiking a lot. We go off trail a lot. Now I know for sure we're never going off trail again. So let me talk about this. Especially if you come from like a country where maybe um, it's a smaller country. So, to, so you don't see a lot of like unused land. We know right now that they're trying to sell us this story that we're overpopulated. If you live in Appalachia or at the tail end of Appalachia or anywhere along Appalachian, you know that is simply bullshit. Because Appalachia, the Appalachian Mountains are so dense in certain areas and so dangerous in certain areas just by the ruggedness of the mountain that there is no way for humans to be there. Or so we thought. One can get very lost in Appalachia. Come to find out, if you do get Appalachia... If you do get lost in Appalachia, you, you might be you might be screwed. You might be someone's dinner. So these clans of feral people. There was one story. I'm going to I'm going to share one story that I heard told repeatedly as I was like hyperventilating and looking information up about this. And I, I can't remember what year this I'm I'm paraphrasing this story. I mean, it it might have been the mid 2000s, like 2005, 2006. Uh, a man was seen um, very sick, kind of leaning up against a telephone pole. He had made his way close to, to civilization in, in the North Carolina area of Appalachia. And so the EMTs were called in to pick this man up. Apparently, this man was covered in ticks. Looked like he had never been inside of a building before. Was very hairy, very dirty had crazy looking eyes, which that's one thing about these clans of feral people that are, is the most common is that their eyes freak people out. And when they were doing testing on him, two things became very apparent. That this man was severely inbred and was also suffering from a, D, a disease called Kuru. Now, many of you watching right now know what Kuru is, but for those who don't know what that is, that is a disease, a fatal disease, 
that is only present in cannibals. And not just cannibals, but people specifically who eat the brains of other humans. We, we first kind of learned about Kuru from Papua New Guinea. Um, there were massive outbreaks of Kuru in Papua New Guinea due to the fact that in their uh, funeral, their funeral ceremonies for their culture, it was customary to eat the body, body parts of deceased relatives. So it was part of their religious ceremony. It wasn't like, I don't believe that the people of Papua New Guinea were like hunting people. It was part of their religious ceremonies after the person died. Kuru kind of eats away. It, you're, you're eating, basically it's the ingestion of py, py, prions in the brain. And if you ingest over time a lot of prions from, from another human's brain, it's going to basically, from what I understand, and I'm not a scientist, but it's basically going to start to disintegrate your own brain. And this obviously, can, without a brain, you can't live, right? So it's going to start over time. You're going to start to see the side effects of Kuru being tremors. People start to shake, almost like they're having seizures, um, to the point where they can't uh, stand up by themselves. They need someone to hold them up. Uh, I think towards the end, when they start to get close to death, they, they get what's called the laughing sickness, where they, can, they can't stop laughing. And I think part of that is the fact that the brain is, is disintegrating, and so it's shooting off weird you know, weird commands to the body. It is fatal. There is no cure for it from what I understand. And we do know from a lot of accounts that the feral people, the clan, they, they travel in clans, um, that they are cannibals. They hunt us from time to time. We know from stories that of people who have run-ins with these feral people that in a lot of ways they are um, animalistic, which they would have to be, right? If we, we look at this from a, a just common sense, in order to survive. I mean, Appalachia is gorgeous, it's beautiful, but it is harsh. This is a harsh environment to survive in. And I want to make something else clear before we, I'm not talking about hillbillies, y'all. Like hillbillies are part of our civilization. Hillbillies are not feral people. These feral people can run faster than dogs from many accounts. They're able to climb up trees faster than a monkey or a squirrel. They don't have any type of um, civilized hygiene like we do. So what do I mean by this? They they don't, uh, they're very hairy. Um, and I've, I've kind of thought a lot about this. Like some people in, in, in the um, stories I looked at and articles I read are like, oh, are these people the missing link? No, I don't think so. Well, first of all, I don't believe in the fact that we evolved from a monkey or not the fact, the theory. I don't believe in that theory anymore. I used to, but I don't. After all of my personal research, it is I have come to the conclusion that no, we don't come from monkeys. But I do believe in the evolution of our own species by what the by the Darwinian theory of survival of the fittest. I think that is obviously a very true theory. I mean it's kind of common sense, right? So like the survival of the fittest. It is what it says it is. The the body, the being that's the most malleable, that can adapt to its um, environments the quickest and therefore become the strongest, those are the ones who survive. And so when we're looking at these people, these feral people that live in these clans, even though, as many people have said, if you see one, it will not initially look like another human being to you because we look so different. They're oftentimes very, what we perceive to be very deformed. But again, this could be their the, the evolution of their own bodies um, and the acclimating to um, Appalachia. They're very hairy. And again, I don't know specifically what race these people would be, but I know for me as like a white woman of mostly Northern European descent, even though I have a lot of hair on my head, I don't have a lot of hair on my body. Um, obviously, I shave my legs. I shave under my arms. My arm hairs, though, are very blonde. It's not very thick. 
But who's to say if I were to go and decide to live a feral life in the Appalachia, if my body would start to produce more of that in order to survive? You know, I believe the same thing with the sun. I believe that if you are from Northern Europe or somewhere where you don't get a lot of sun and you have very fair skin, I do believe that over time, if you were to move to an island in this near the equator, you would probably go through a lot of sunburns. But over time, I think your body would start. That's just my belief. Your body would naturally start to adapt to its surroundings. And so when I hear these descriptions of feral people, we, we know from the ones that people have examined that they've seen, like the guy with the ticks and the kuru, that they are the same species and they are human beings. They are human. However, at first glance, we might not recognize them as such because of the, the, the demands of their living. If you look at someone like me, obviously, I live in, in civilization, right? The demands of me living in Atlanta produce someone that, that looks like me or you, right? That that is clean, we wash our hair, we take showers, we we don't have to climb trees every day for survival. Our exercise is done for health purposes, not to hunt or to survive. We know that these people don't take shelter like we do. Like we know that these people don't set up camps with like tents or any type of teepee if we're looking at like Native American stuff. They literally survive in the wild, in a clan. We know that they do not speak English or any language recognized today as a language. A lot of people who have run across these clans claim that they don't speak any language. Instead, they just growl or whistle or maybe even speak more telepathically or energetically. And I, and I do think that would happen. I do think, you know, in fairness, if we all of a sudden had to run up into Appalachia and live, I think our senses with each other probably would heighten, especially without cell phones or technology. I mean, please, these people don't even know how to read or write. They've never seen a computer. They've never seen a cell phone. Some people say they do have like a clicking language, like, a, like that you see in Africa a lot. They hear them clicking with each other. Um, obviously, inbreeding is a problem. So, you know, that's questionable. Do they not? I don't want to call them stupid. They're not, trust me, they're not stupid. They survive. I mean, Appalachia Mountains, even though I live in Atlanta where it doesn't get that cold, it doesn't get that, you know, the Appalachia up in the mountains, they get snow, they get heat, they get tornadoes. So they, they're surviving and very incremental weather that I don't think we could. If we, if you and I were put out there without cover through a tornado or a snowstorm, we'd probably die. And these people have learned how to survive. So I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm just saying I don't think that they have understood biology or, or how, because they, they inbreed. They're obviously very inbred. And it might be because these clans, I, I listened to one guy when I was yesterday, I was like, what the hell is this? One guy was saying that in order to have a, a, the growth of a society where there isn't any inbreeding, you have to have about 500 people. But most of these clans of feral people are less than 50. So obviously we're looking at heavy inbreeding. It's wild to me to think of the women having babies out in Appalachia without any type of like doctor there. I mean, Jesus, like I just, I, it's just, it, when I really think about what this implies, like it just blows my mind. Um, again, their eyes are, are said to be a very like clear blue color and are very wild. Like they don't, they look like human eyes in the sense that they have the same retinas, pupils, so all that kind of stuff as us, but there is just something energetically different about them. And they're very clear blue is what, what has been, been said. Many people state that if you are hiking in Appalachia, they could potentially be sitting at the tops of trees and you would never know. It's kind of like when I was in Africa, they, they told me if you see a lion, it's the last thing you see. Like there's many times you could be walking near a lion and you would never know because the lion won't let you know it's there. I mean, fucking creepy. How creepy is this, you guys? How creepy? How creepy? Anyway, it is stated that if you are, an, are on Appalachia Trail, 
it is advised that you not leave the trail, the trail that's been developed. If you're camping, that you make sure you stay at the designated campsites. This is to keep you safe. It has also been advised by many people who are aware that these people exist, that if you do dare to go into Appalachia for a long hike, and now listen, guys, I'm not talking about the towns. Like we're looking at doing, potentially doing a retreat in Highlands, North Carolina, which is in Appalachia, but it's a fucking town. Like if you're in a town, like if you're in Clayton or Asheville or a town, the, the, the feral people aren't going to come near that. So if you're at a retreat center up in Dahlonega, you're safe. Like no feral person's going to come in there, right? I'm talking about if you decide to go off on your own deep into the Appalachia, this is where you're going to have the propensity to run into these people. If you stay on the trail, you're probably not going to run into them. If you go off trail, which a lot of people do, that's when you're gambling. So it is advised that if you decide to do that, that you need to have a on you. Why is this? Because this is the one thing that will save you from them. They don't have these from what I understand and all the research I have, but they do have spears and they do know how to fight and to kill with their hands. It seems that they will not, though, bother you unless they feel threatened by you, by your presence, or they're hungry because they eat people, they eat us. There's no indication from any of the research that I've seen that they actually eat each other. So with that being said, if that is true, then at least they have some understanding that their clan is their own kind. But it appears that they don't understand that we are also their own kind. Another kind of creepy fact about these people is that they never have shoes. So their clothing is very, um, people say they dress in pellets from animals, like they create their own clothes and they don't wear shoes. So their feet have to be extremely tough. Again, Appalachia, off-trail Appalachia is is dense. Um, there's sticker bushes everywhere. If I were to walk off-trail in Appalachia, I would probably last two minutes before I was just bleeding obsessively. In fact, there's a video I stumbled across of two guys who went, who are in the area, and they went up there and decided to go a little bit off-trail to see what they could find. And it was a hot summer's day, so they had shorts on, and they were like five minutes into the off the trail, and they both were saying, man, we should have worn pants because they were so scratched up and bloody from, from the sticker bushes and the leaves and the branches and everything hitting them. You know, so if we look at that with it, from our own experience of being very thin skinned and, you know, living in a civilization where we're protected, these feral people can run faster, faster than a dog through this dense forest. They can climb up trees faster than a squirrel. Their, their feet have to be just tough and their hands have to be tough. So, Listen, no offense to you watching right now, but if I were a gambling woman and it was you against a feral person, my money's on the feral person. So again, the one thing that's going to protect you is this. That's it. And you're going to have to act fast. Because when they're hungry, they're hunting you. They will hunt you. They will hunt children, babies. Again, I don't think they realize that we are them. Now, what's also interesting in this whole thing is that they believe that some of these missing people cases like National Forest aren't probably aren't UFO related, maybe even not controllers related, but might be related to feral people taking them, especially with children who wander off, which is, is it's all sad anyway to miss a child like that, but disgusting um american horror stories not story but stories 
uh, the the like a many like the short stories they do uh, season one episode six called feral kind of goes into this now they created their feral people to look a little bit more monsterish which um i think they i mean they took artistic license right like to make them look a little bit more gory um and from under what i what i understand even though they are not uh they don't look like us i don't think they're as gory as that and it is proposed in this series on this episode which we gotta remember there might be a little bit of truth in this because that's what they do they tell us right that national parks were established to contain the feral people now i don't know now of course with american horror stories they're saying yeah and every once in a while they have to make a sweep and like kill some of the feral people just to keep the population low to keep uh, us other humans safe I don't know if that's why, but that makes sense that the American government would be aware that these are cannibalistic tribes that live in our backyard, basically. And I don't know if they're keeping them enclosed in a national park to keep us away from them or if they're maybe harvesting them to release them on us at some point. I don't know. Um, I definitely don't think it's to keep us safe. That is for sure. Now, many people um, wonder wh where do these feral people come from? And again, I want to reiterate, I'm actually shocked that at 40 years old, this is how I'm, I'm learning about this. Because apparently, as it happens, everyone from this area knows about feral people but me. I, I And my, my boyfriend didn't either. And, you know, well, he spent his, world, his life traveling around the world with the military. But... It's so commonly known in North Carolina, in that area, that they call them cavemen. And it's just kind of known, you don't bother them, they don't bother us. Just leave them be. Don't get too close to their encampment. Don't get too close to them. They don't come to our towns and our villages. They don't come and hunt from our streets so we don't go out there with them. I say their towns or villages, it sounds like they're pretty nomad, that their clans kind of move around. It doesn't, no indication that they actually have like a home base. So who, are, where did these people come from? Like I even said to my boyfriend, I was like, it would be really interesting if we knew what race they were or if they're a bunch of races. I, I don't know. I don't even think people really register that when they see them because they're so dirty and covered in hair that it's hard to tell their physical attributes beyond the shock of seeing somebody that appears to be deformed i mean could you imagine seeing a human being just covered in ticks disgusting barefoot never had put shoes on so there is a legend that some people believe that these clans of feral people generated from the civil war i don't believe this I don't believe this because the Civil War was not that long ago historically. I mean, it was a long time ago. I mean, it's all relative, right? But historically speaking, so what they believe is that when the Civil War happened, because Appalachia is on the eastern, eastern board of the United States. So for those who are not familiar, if you're not from the United States, we believe the story that the controllers have told us about the settlement of this country. The colonists came in on the eastern border right so the 13 original colonies georgia was one of them all the way up up to maine yeah so when you get to when they the boats came in you go a few hundred miles in all of a sudden you're in appalachia now at the appalachian mountains are also the oldest mountain chain in the world the world my friends so they believe that when the Civil War started, of course, it was happening all up and down the eastern seaboard because that was the United States at that time, a little bit more Western at that time. But this was like the heart of where it was that people who lived up and down Appalachia from because it goes all the way up to Canada, guys, Appalachian Mountains. So just decided the people that didn't want anything to do with the war. It's almost like when the draft Dodgers ran to Canada from the United States during Vietnam these people were dodgers who just ran deep into appalachian mountains and that's when it's kind of like m night Shyamalan's the village 
However, because they were in a national park too, right? However, this is where I start to go, no, I don't think that's right. Because the way that these people act is so far gone from the way us in civilization act that I really don't see how this is possible. So if you've got Bobby and Mary and Janie and Sue and Tommy and Philip and they all decide we're not going to have anything to do with this, we're just going to go deep into Appalachia, don't you think they would have set up a homestead somewhere? Like, don't you think people who were used to like living in a house, sleeping in a bed, having shelter, brushing their hair, bathing, however often they bathed back then, would want to create something deep in the woods in their own little haven that would resemble something of what they know. That's it's not just the creature comforts. It's what, you know, you know, we know we need shelter. We know we need X, Y, and Z. We know we need hygiene. We know all these things. So even though you might be aware that your life is going to be a little bit different hiding, you would at least try to do something that that mirrored how you know to live and i think that would be passed down in the generations now the civil war only lasted like five years so over time i think you would peep out look and see okay it's over come back out but if not i think you would still pass down language i think you would still be speaking to each other in english and your children being born would hear you speaking learn the language too i think you would continue certain things like writing how to write you know i think you would know that brothers and sisters shouldn't be boinking each other if you went and hid in the mid 1800s by that point you might not know it about cousins at that point but you know brothers and sisters shouldn't so that kind of x nays that for me and with that when that being said too like i said this is not most of the concentrated stories we see are in appalachia that's where they mostly happen. But we do have stories from Canada, Western Canada. They're possibly into Europe where there's it's very mountainous. So this is not just a phenomenon that's happening here. I think these people have been around for a long, a lot longer than we have. And I don't believe that they are actually aliens. I mean, we all, we're all kind of aliens at the end of the day. But you guys know what I mean. I, I think they are from this earth just like we are. And I think they were here first. I know that they are not Native Americans because, oh, and that's another thing that x nays the whole Civil War theory is because apparently the Native Americans in this area also had stories about the feral humans. Because even though Native Americans, their, their structure of society was very different for, than us who are descendants of Europe, they still had structured societies they still had a civilization even if they were nomadic they had structure they had teepees they had mud huts whatever wherever they were they had that you know they had that sense of a town or a village where they had interpersonal relationships with each other where they had some sort of law enforcement with each other these feral people, even though they might have their own specific laws and cultures and all that kind of stuff that we don't understand, they're wild. They're like wild animals compared to us and compared to the Native Americans. And so even the Native, again, the Native Americans would warn their people about getting too far deep into the mountains because of the feral people. So as I say, my friends, I think these people have been a, around for a very very long time. One last thing of note before we end this story for today is that many people do believe that these feral people are associated again with Bigfoot and the dog man and the werewolves. I believe I mentioned this briefly earlier. I don't believe that this is possible. I just want to make that clear. I mean, it is possible and I do believe that they are very much aware of Bigfoot and the wolf man and all these cryptoid creatures, but I don't think that they are with them i think like us they inhabit this dimension and they possibly see things like we do although they're probably a little bit more used to it than we are since they are in the wild all right you guys i'm super super excited i can't wait to hear your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below do you believe this is why that we have national another reason why we have national parks is to help 
house these humans? Do you know any stories of these feral, these wild men, these feral uh, humans? Are you are from Appalachia as well? Have you seen anything? Does this make sense to you? Do you believe that the controllers know about these feral people and are using them? To their advantage I, I can't wait to hear all of your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below um i will be on aquarius rising africa at 9 a.m this morning not 10 but 9 because we had our time change and south africa does not change time so now it's gonna be 9 a.m for the sum summer and then we change times again it'll go back to 10 a.m we will not be discussing this on aquarius rising africa this morning we are doing a series on speaking of cannibals <laughs> on missing body parts and missing bodies of the dead we've covered so far matahari and her missing head alexander the great and his missing body today we are covering uh king henry the fourth of france uh, i will put i covered this story a long time ago on my channel i will put that story link from my channel down in the in the description box as well as well as matahari and alexander the great if you would like to watch it first before you join us live at nine, if not, make sure you join us live at nine where we will be discussing this again and trying to figure out where all these bodies are going. Um, anyway, you guys, I am going to be bringing a folklorist from Georgia um, on this channel very soon. And so uh, hopefully she can cover feral people as well. We can have a more of a deeper discussion about the folklore of feral people in uh, this area. But anyway, guys, I hope you have a fantastic start to your week and I will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.